Hello, welcome back to the channel. I've just gotten back home from a big tour. I've been doing live shows in front of real live audiences again. It's been an absolute blast. The only downside is I haven't had time to do a play along video this week, but I thought we'd mix it up a little bit and do five things that really come in handy to be able to practice when you're not at home. <laughs> So let's dive right in. First on the list, and probably the most important, is a tablet. I'm a bit of an Apple nerd, so I've got an iPad, but whatever you've got is fine. If you've got a tablet, it means you've got a metronome, and it means you've got a tuner. But you can also use it to store all of your sheet music. I use an app called Music, but there are a whole bunch of different apps. I used to use PeerScore, but I found Music just works a little bit better for me. So just as a really quick example, if I jump into my set lists, and I go to method books and I click on the Arben method for trombone. That is 395 pages of trombone exercises that I don't have to lug around with me. You take a photo or you find PDFs online, import them in. The other really handy thing is because I make arrangements on MuseScore, I can export them straight to music and just read them straight there. So I don't need to print any music out. So you're kind of helping the environment a little bit as well. Second thing on the list, and this flows right on from having a tablet, is having something to put your tablet on. Having a little tablet stand is really, really useful because you always think, oh, I should be able to prop it up on a bookshelf or just, you know, put it on the edge of the bed, but you can't play with good posture. You can't see it properly. It's just much, much better to actually fork out for the stand, have the stand. They don't weigh very much. They pack down really, really small, and then you've got it and you can have the music exactly where you need it so you're nice and comfortable when you practice. The third thing on the list, and this is something that I only recently discovered and I wish I found it a whole lot sooner because it's made life so much easier. This is a wireless page turner. So it works off Bluetooth, you just stomp on the pedal and it turns the page for you, you stomp on the other pedal and it turns the page back. It's really, really handy because when you're practicing, of course the page turn is always at the same point in the music. So if you're having to put your instrument down and touch the iPad, you're always kind of disrupting your flow at the same point in the music. So having something like this is really, really handy. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, this one, has settings for Apple or Android. It's got an extra connector if you use a, a looper app, something like Loopy, and then it just uh, charges through a USB cable there. Now, not only do these things turn the page for you, but this is something I discovered recently. I kind of discovered it by accident, actually. If you're playing along to something on YouTube, say you've got a an accompaniment for a solo that you're working on, or even better, you're playing along to one of my play along videos on my YouTube channel, you can use the trigger to fast forward or rewind. So if you press the page turn forwards, it'll go forwards 10 seconds. And if you go backwards, of course, it'll go backwards 10 seconds. So when you're playing along and say you've forgotten a count and you've missed an entry or you've just made a mistake, you can just stomp on the back pedal and it'll rewind 10 seconds and you can kind of keep your flow going. Also means if there's a bit in the middle that you just wanna skip, you just stomp on it a couple of times and you're back into it. Number four, and this is the first one that hasn't got to do with technology. This is old school. This is a practice mute. So the one I use is called Shush Mute, but you can use any one that works for you. This is the trombone one. This is one for a trumpet, and they are fantastic. They are so quiet. You can practice in a hotel room at midnight and not get noise complaints. Believe me, I've done it many, many times. I work in the theater and often lighting rehearsals can go for hours and you just need to be there and be quiet. And I can practice the trombone and not bother other people. And it it just means you're, you're making use of that downtime. When you're away from home, it's a really, really handy thing. Now, some people argue that you can develop bad habits playing with a practice mute too often, and that's probably true, but I'm gonna be a little bit controversial here and say that I really dislike the saying, only perfect practice makes perfect, because not every practice session you do is going to be perfect. I really like the saying, if something's worth doing, it's worth doing badly. Uh, when someone explained this to me, they, they talked about uh, brushing your teeth. So brushing your teeth is worth doing and it's worth doing badly. It's better to just brush your teeth a little bit every day rather than only doing it when you can do it perfectly. 
not every practice session you do is going to be perfect. Yes, in an ideal world, you want to have a beautiful practice room with good acoustics, got no distractions, and you've got all the time in the world, but really, you've just got to make do with what you've got. And if you've only got 20 minutes, if you've got noise next door, and if you've got the need to be quiet, it's much better to do something than nothing. So I think practice mutes are really, really handy, particularly when you've just got to make the best of your situation. Number five, the last one on the list. This one might seem a little bit random. It's got nothing to do with music whatsoever, but it's frequent flyer status. If you fly a lot, which I do, and you take an instrument with you, having frequent flyer status often gets you extra bags so you can take more equipment. But what I really love is you get priority boarding. So if you travel with a trombone, you do want to take it with you. I don't want to check my trombone in. I don't want it to get damaged. And I've never had a problem with taking it on board. The only problem is if you can't fit it in those overhead bins. If they can't fit it in there, then they will take it and they'll throw it underneath the aeroplane and then I'll spend the whole flight just feeling anxious about whether it will come out damaged or not. So by having a bit of status with a frequent flyer program, you can get on first and you can get space in the overhead bins and you can not worry about your poor instrument getting damaged for the flight. I was really lucky on this last tour, we, we went to quite a small town and we had to take a, just a small twin prop plane and the overhead bins just weren't big enough to fit a trombone in and the staff were so nice they let me put the trombone in a spare seat. In fact, there was a whole spare row and they got a little kid's seat belt and they strapped it in so the trombone could just sit across the aisle from me and I knew it would be safe and didn't have to go underneath the aeroplane. And sometimes when you've got a bit of frequent flyer status, they're just a little bit nicer to you when you've got requests like that. So uh, if you do fly a lot, make sure you sign up to the loyalty program because it, they are totally worth it. So anyway, there we go. Five things that are really handy if you practice away from home. If I've forgotten any, make sure you let me know in the comments if there are things that you find really useful when practicing away from home. Make sure you let me know and I'll be back here next week with another play along trombone video. Thanks for watching. 